Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Pepelides, live at the New York Stock Exchange. It's time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts here to take us through the trades. Joel Hawthorne, head of equity research at Retail Trader Magazine. Joel, great to see you. Glad you're on with us today. So I know you're going to have some trades for us. What's your big picture on a day where we are seeing the biggest selling of the year for the Dow, the biggest selling for the NASDAQ and the S&P as well since January? Um, your thoughts, are there opportunities in a market like this, or does this make you nervous? Uh, great to be here. Thank you, Nicole. Always great to be on your show. Uh, great to see you there, Ben. Uh, it does make me nervous. Uh, uh, it's just simply because I think all of us can say, I think unanimously, that we were wondering when was the buying going to at least have a breath, right? Uh, just looking at the weeks that we've seen in the S&P, probably out of the past 16 weeks, uh, we've probably had one or two weeks where we did not make a higher high. So I, I think that's unprecedented. And I think this kind of buying that we've seen over the past almost, you know, three months has just been uh, insane. Uh, it's just been shocking. I think caught a lot of people off guard, especially as a, as a trader who does put on short term positions. So today's uh, pullback after that CPI data uh, does uh, is cautionary for me. And uh, I am uh, a bit uh, nervous for both sides of the market. Is this a dip buying opportunity yeah. or do we finally see bears uh, have some trend? Right. All right. So let's talk about Okta. What a choppy chart this one really is. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Year to date, down about 7%. What are you thinking here today? It's down 2% today. Yeah, I think right now, I think Okta overall, I think that this is one that uh, we saw a high of about 92.38 for the 52-week high. We're currently trading 84 and change. Can we revisit those highs? I think uh, is very subjective in the line of how much selling pressure we're going to get here today for the rest of the trading day and then going into uh, some of the short term uh, over the next week or two, if, if this is going to be sustainable or not. If that is the case, uh, I think buyers will have a, a moment of capitulation and take a breath from trying to buy the dip. So I, I am a bear here just because I think that this weakness that we see here very well may have some momentum uh, for more than just one trading session. Right. Understood. OK, so I would like to hear what uh, Ben Lichtenstein has to say about this chart. It's unusual we see such a choppy chart like this one, Ben. Your thoughts on Okta? Yeah, you mentioned the choppy trade. All of it's occurred below that low that or that high that Joel mentioned up around 92, 93. And I agree with the the technicals, I should say, agree with the uh, a bearish approach towards trading this one. Let's take a look first and foremost at the two phases of development that you can see playing out here across the hourly time frame. We're going all the way back to the end of October right now into the fall of last year. Stock was bottoming out around 965. You see that earnings catalyst that provides that imbalance. And then we transition back into that horizontal phase of development where values formed at a new higher level. So basically on this chart, you can see simply put two areas of value uh, and we're moving higher, right? So from 70 to 86 right now, this is the area that I think is significant. Joel mentioned 92.38, right? Let me show you why. As we take a step back away from the hourly candle chart and uh, take a look at the daily, you're gonna see that area has posed a, a bit of an area of resistance, a bit of a struggle for the bears in the past here. Again, just kind of right around this 90, 88 to 92 area. And again, even most recently as we've come off of the highs from uh, end of last week, beginning of this week, you could see that we've uh, stalled out there. So another lower high, again, not what the bulls want to see. Speaking of not what the bulls want to see, this is a stock that's been in the longer term trend to the downside. Now we were getting a little bit of a lift, right? And so there was some encouragement here as we came off the recent lows here. This is a daily candle chart we're going all the way back to the spring of uh, 2021. Let me show you what I was talking about in terms of when we were getting that little bit of a lift. We were balancing at, uh, areas uh, lower and lower, lower levels. So again, trending to the downside. And that little bit of a lift came off that range that we had been in around 53. But look again, right where it stalled, these areas that we mentioned before, that 93 level. So what I went ahead and did was just kind of took a step back with this one, pulled out a fat crayon and sort of established this as just one kind of larger area balance. Again, you've got some resistance up around this 92, 93 area. Weakness back below 86 opens up a door for a retest of lows that we saw end of last year, end of 2022, I should say, beginning of last year. The stock's coming under pressure here right now over the long term and potentially here now if we get some uh, more weakness here on the broader market short term as well. 
Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, he sees your bearish approach, understands why you're going that way, Joel. Um, final thoughts on your trade here. Absolutely. Uh, using some of those swing highs and some of that higher price action as of late to build a trade. So we're going to sell the 89 call expiring uh, February 23rd, simultaneously buying the 90 call uh, expiring the same date, February 23rd, risking uh, collecting a credit of about 16 cents. Break even is 89.14, currently trading 84 and change. Um, I really think that uh, some of that higher price action uh, could act as a, a bit of a strong resistance. And again, if this market uh, selling pressure continues to have some momentum, I think this will could potentially work out in my favor. Okay, next up, you have a C3AI and you're feeling a little more bullish on this one today. Why is that? Yeah, I think this is one of those names that I think uh, definitely uh, as investors are still looking for that AI craze that a lot of momentum in the AI realm, I think this is one of those that still has more momentum to the upside. We see what has happened with NVIDIA. We see some of the just the madness and buying uh, pressure there. Even on a day like today, NVIDIA is performing uh, shockingly well with some upgrades that they've gotten. So uh, I think this is one of those that investors are going to take a notice to at some point and, uh, and really start to pile into as well. Uh, right now, we're looking at some higher price action right around uh, currently trading 29 and change uh, with, uh, I think, a yesterday's high of about 31 and change or so ish. So I think there's some momentum to the upside there. I'm a bull here in the short term. All right. I mean, and now you have a 5 percent, right? Because it pulled back 5 percent. So you really got some room maybe for that. Tell us uh, more about the chart and the technicals today, Ben. Well, I think there's a, a couple different ways of approaching this one, depending on which time frame you're talking about. Let's begin first and foremost with the bullish more granular 30 minute time frame. And I can understand what Joel's talking about. He mentioned the word uh, momentum multiple times. Taking a look at a 30 minute candle chart, you can see there has been momentum right over the last uh, week or so. We were down around 2450 and you can see areas of value. Again, a 30 minute candle chart that have been moving to the upside recently balancing around 31, not what the bulls wanted to see the breakdown, but Look, we're kind of holding this key level right around 29, so possibly just starting to establish something larger in this area. But I do want to point to the fact that there's definitely some momentum, as Joel mentioned, on the 30-minute candle chart. And we're holding up above a key area right around 29 right now, even after that broader base selling that we're seeing. Speaking of broader base selling here, take a look. This is what I'm talking about in terms of you have to be very time frame specific about this one, depending on uh, which stance you're taking, because with a daily candle chart, you can see that we're actually, well, in a bit of a, a bearish pattern that's playing out here. Taking a look here, you can see that, well, hold on a second. This was uh, my daily, okay. Uh, here you can see areas of consolidation that have formed at lower and lower levels. So you can see that we just recently kind of peaked above this balance point 28 to kind of a pivotal area here right now still holding above that so could be some room to potentially retest these upper extremes that we saw but 36 is the real key area right now to the upside we're still holding well below that right now in a longer downturn trend here speaking of let's take another step back here because uh, 28 I mentioned is a key area when we're looking at that daily we've added some time on here you can still see the significance there of going all the way back to the beginning of 2021 look at this high conviction of the downside from 184 and then basically in the spring summer of 2021 throughout 2022 and to present we have been essentially sideways but holding this lower level no rejection of so longer term trend of the downside still intact but yeah as Joel mentioned some momentum on the short term that's for sure yeah, and I understand that. And, you know, as we take a look at C3 AI and, you, and you're feeling this bullish, um, the momentum, um, overall, do you think AI is going to be, again, the language of 2024, much like it was in 2023, Joel? I do. I do, Nicole, absolutely. I think that's some of the language that uh, has really spearheaded uh, so much of this, these moves that we've seen, the, the, these aggressive moves. Uh, for, yeah. I mean, I think the entire third and fourth quarter of last year. So that's not, I, I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. And it's hard to not pile into a name like uh, C3 AI if that's going to be the case because of its just overall stock price at $29 and their relation and their leadership and their relationship with Microsoft. So I think that's going to be something that investors are definitely going to be taking a, a closer look at. I'm a bull here, as I mentioned before. I'm going to be selling that $22.50 uh, put expiring March 15th, simultaneously buying uh, the 20 put that expires March 15th, 
uh, collecting a credit of about 46 cents, break even to 22.04. And uh, we're definitely going to uh, look to see more momentum to the upside so we can keep the premium we collected there. Yeah. Okay. Next up, you're feeling a little bearish on Amazon, which hit that high of 175 and change. Um, your thoughts, please. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's exactly the, the reason why I'm a bear here. I mean, I like Amazon, but I think just from a short term trading perspective and just from a technical level on the chart, I think I have some uh, some levels drawn near the 180 ish level. And I think right there, having a 52 week high of 175, I think all of those will be key components to why I do expect Amazon to have a bit of a stall out uh, and uh, run into a bit of either resistance or choppiness at, at its current level, at the current, excuse me, at its current levels. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, I was just looking to see if there were any analyst calls. I don't see any today or very recently um, to see how people are feeling about Amazon and maybe some of the magnificent seven names. So tell me about Amazon today, Ben. Well, we know how they're feeling about it uh, in terms of the, after that CPI report, right? They're uh, not feeling so great about it. You can see that on uh, the more granular five minute time frame. Let's just begin with the selling we're seeing uh, in reaction to today's report because this is a pretty good representation of the broader market and what we've seen a big move from 176 all the way down to 165. You can see how we've come off that low though significantly. So possibly establishing a new lower extreme here. Uh, again, you've got a pretty wide range here though, $10 uh, in reaction to this number here. Let's take a step back here because this is where we can start to establish uh, a bit of a trend to the upside. And you can also see the significance of this pullback, but how it hasn't really invalidated the working assumption that value is moving higher at this point, right? We continue to see that as we are holding above 150. That's the key area, the area that we formed. Uh, we got range bound into the end of last year, beginning of this year. You can see, look at this high conviction breakout. That's that vertical phase that we look for, the transition from the kind of low conviction, random type price activity to the high conviction phase in reaction to earnings uh, in the beginning of February. And then Look at this, exactly what the bulls wanted to see. Maybe not this, the, the pullback that we've seen off that upper level, but this consolidation definitely, because that's a form of value forming at this higher level after a big move up. Again, going all the way back to earnings in October when we were trading around uh, 117. I mean, this has just been a staggering move up here. So yeah, rolling over a bit here, but take a look. This is a stock that, if you remember, was trending lower. So I think that the bulls still have some momentum here, Nicole. You can see that we bottomed out after balancing into the fall of uh, 2022, beginning of last year, February, January, February, around 95. And the Bears wanted to see us form a new area balance at a lower level at that point. They wanted to see us continuation off the double top that we saw back in July of uh, uh, 2021 and the end of that year. But look what happened instead. We took out 124. Nice bottoming pattern form here. All of this price activity above has invalidated that trend lower. Once we took out 124, this is, again, exactly what the bulls are looking for here. Holding upper levels, no rejection of, yeah, a little intraday weakness in reaction to CPI today, but that broader market's weighing on everyone, I think. Okay, understood. And so um, you get uh, the last word here with your trade. Tell us more, Joel. Absolutely. Uh, definitely here using uh, that upside price action that we've seen here above that 175 level. We're going to sell the 185 call, uh, simultaneously buying the 190 call. Both strikes expire March 15th, uh, collecting a credit of 42 cents. Break even is 185.43. So looking for a bit of resistance there above that 175-ish levels, and we'll see what happens. All right. Retail Trader Magazine. We will uh, take a look for that. Joel Hawthorne, great to have you on the show as always. Thank you for being here. And of course, Ben Lichtenstein on the charts. Great big three today. Okta, C3AI, and Amazon.